Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, so, let's continue um, our uh, the series of Rust tutorials. This is the third tutorial. Okay, okay let's go to the package uh, from the previous, uh, sorry, uh, uh, to the, uh, the project from the previous uh, tutorial when we created, um, when we used, uh, when we installed the QTC uh, Rust uh, plugin for Rust RS development. We'll find our previous packages, package demo and package demo underscore two. Uh, let's start by well, remove these first. Remove directory, delete permanently. Yeah, and the other one too. Directory. Okay. Very well. Then let's create our first uh, our first actual package. Okay, let's do this by catkin create package right. Let's name it um, Ross. No, no, no. Let's uh, let's name it something um, catchy. My first awesome package. Okay. And my package, I wanted to depend on Ross CPP and std underscore messages. Okay. I create a package. You see that it's. Uh, it also uh, appeared um, over here. Very well. Let's create right here. Let's see CD into my first. Okay. We list find the two folders SRC and um, include CD into SRC. Okay. Then we create. Let's do this. Um, okay, let's move on to the uh, to the ID. It'll be much um, better. Okay, so add add existing directory. Add SRC and include. For some reason they don't seem to be listing. Okay, whatever. Let's um, add a new score no dot cpp okay and there's an illustration on publishers subscribers subscribers um, type of communication in ROS. Okay, just to initialize that. I'm gonna close this and open it again. And I've confused. Ah, there you are. Very well. We start any node in um, in uh, start writing actually ROS compatible code first. We have to include ROS slash ROS dot h. Okay, then we're going to include the following message: std messages slash string dot h. Okay. Uh, what? What makes a difference between an executable file and a library file is mainly is the main function. If we define the main function inside um, a, a file, when this file is compiled, it becomes an executable file. Okay. If uh, we create a, f um, a file that does not contain the main function, it will not be an executable file okay uh, then we define our function our main function to have 
do input arguments. Okay. Very well. The first thing that needs to be that needs to be executed for um, an, an, a ROS um, executable is the function called um, init inside the ROS um, namespace. What this does, well, let's you know what? Let's check its documentation together. ROS init. There you are. Okay. There are two levels of initialization, of initialization for a ROS CPP node. Okay, initializing the node through a call to one of the ROS init functions. This provides command line arguments to ROS and allows you to name your node and specify other options. Okay, starting the node is most often done through creation of ROS handle, but in advanced cases can be done in different ways. Uh, we have uh, the first thing before calling uh, this is this is an important thing before calling any other ROS CPP functions in a node you must call one of the ROS init functions the uh, two common init fun invocations are first ROS init arc c arc v my node name this is we enter uh, this is where we run the init function giving it the arc c the arguments given to the node and the arc v uh, sorry the count of the arguments given to the node and then arc v which are the arguments themselves then the name of our node okay this is what we're going to write in our a in our um, code all right arc c okay and arc v and then the name of our node let's call it talker Note. Okay. After creating the ROS, uh, after running the the init function, we can now use any other function in ROS CPP package, right? For example, let's uh, create an instance of node handle. Uh, what we do with uh, node handle is that we, we use its um, we use the 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 classes methods in creating. Other important um, uh, objects. For example, if we use the function advertise, this creates a publisher object which is used to publish messages. Okay. If we run the function uh, advertise service, this what it, it what it does is that it creates a service um, server and we use that to um, advertise services and provide services to other nodes. Right. If we uh, use the function uh, create timer, we create an instance of the object timer. If we use you know, for example, the function called get param, we store the value of parameter, or get get the value of a parameter, the, a local parameter in this node, right? Um, we also have the subscribe, I want to get to it, I, that's, that's here over there. So if we use the method uh, called subscribe, we create a subscriber object, which we use to subscribe to topics uh, that, are, that are being published by other um, uh, nodes. So for in this node, we will create an inst uh, we will create an instance of our node. Let's call it node handle. Okay, let's go to be a little more uh, details. Node handle. Okay. After creating this node handle, we will use this node handle to create an instance of our um, of a publisher object. First, let's call it pub. Okay. Then we initialize this with the output of the function node handle dot advertise. Okay. What what advertise does is that it basically takes as input the um, so-called type of the message that we want to advertise. If we go over here to advertise, that's right here. Right, it's a template, and what it is, uh, this version of advertise is a templated convenience function. It can be used like so: rs publisher equal to node hand, uh, handle dot advertise, and between angle brackets we enter the name of our function that we want to create. Okay, then we enter uh, the the parameters. Uh, the parameters that this function takes is the topic, which is a constant um, pointer to a string. Uh, a constant, uh, sorry, a constant uh, string, 
uh, which is the uh, which is the topic to advertise on the name of the topic to advertise on then the queue size which is the maximum number of outgoing messages to be queued for delivery to subscribers if uh, th uh, this number is set to 10 for example and we publish 10 messages these 10 messages if not received by the subscribers stay in a queue of length 10 if i publish another um top uh, another uh, message uh, that means that I've published 11 messages and the subscriber has not received anything yet that uh, um, It'll start deleting from the queue Okay, the, the it'll start deleting the first message that was um, received. Okay Very well, so we are going to advertise a, a message of the type std messages string Okay now we're going to advertise that on a topic called um, chatter, right? Very well. And the key size, let's keep it one for now. Very well. Then we are going to enter a while loop, inside which we are going to publish our messages, right? So inside the condition, we could write, you know, you know, for example, we could write while one. So this node will keep running like forever. But instead, I want our function to or our um, our node to run until I enter the escape sequence. What is the escape uh, escape sequence? Is basically is control C. What control C is is the issues that I want to cancel what the process that is running. Um, uh, right now, so what RSOK okay does is that it listens for this escape sequence. If this escape uh, sequence is issued, it returns a zero, and when it returns a zero, the while will exit and will the program will exit as well. So inside the while loop, we will create an instance of our message, std messages string. Let's call it message, right? Then we set the field inside the message which is called data to a value, let's call it, for example, hello sorry, what the hell is that? hello world and then, once we're done, we will uh, use our publisher object, right? to publish our message called message so far so good, right? and for return return zero for our main function all right now we have wrote our first node okay let me open the cmake lists file no, no no let's wait this is our first um, um node co uh, the first uh, code written for a node uh, nice that rhymes together and yes this is our first code written for a node uh, we want now to compile that code. But for that, let me point out a few um, things. Okay, how um, did I know that inside the data structure called uh, of the type uh, std messages string uh, mes uh, named message? How did I know that there's a field inside it called data? Okay, you can make you can find out that on your own by writing rs message show in a terminal. Okay, rs message then show okay then the name of our message which we, uh, which we included right std messages string you'll see that it, it contains one field called data of the type string okay so that's how i knew that there's a field called data inside it by setting it i then uh, i initialize the message and then i publish it okay very well then we return zero and our node is ready now we want to compile this node right let's compile it by uh we 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 add we we want we tell the compiler to compile something inside the cmic lists file okay you see that it's um there's a lot of comments here basically it's just a documentation of the uh documentation or the commands the available commands for uh, or see my list this file. I'm just gonna delete all that because it's not useful to me. It's actually gonna be tricky or tiring to go through scrolling all that. 
I want to add something. Okay, so we want to add a new executable, right? We want to declare a C++ code that want that we want it to be compiled into a, an executable, right? We do that by the uh, using the command add executable. Okay, and the arguments that add executable takes is that it takes first the name of the node or the name of the executable that we want to generate, and it's called for now token node. So all right, token uh, node over here. Then it takes the directory to this um, to this node relative to the, the directory of the package or the directory of uh, in which the CMake list file is located. Okay, so we 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 um, we place it inside the SRC folder, right? Uh, under when the, our file is called toker toker node.cpp very well now that we've added the executable we need to link to it what it needs to be linked right we do that by target by using the command target link libraries we name the 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 executable that we want to target it's uh, to link our libraries to it then we do we list our um, the libraries that we want to link to, to it right and basically what we want to do is that we link all the catkin catkin libraries everything that is contained inside catkin which includes also these packages our CPP and STD messages okay will be linked across to this to this um, node okay very well now let's open Rust terminal we do that by going over here to the bottom and then clicking our terminals then add a new terminal see we CD into tutorials and we run catskin make Our compilation process was done seamlessly, right? We see here it was building CXX object, my first awesome package, and it built the C, uh, the execute the O file or the executable file over here, token node.cpp.o, dot okay, and then it linked to it, linking CXX executable, right? And it linked to it. Uh, to the execute to our executable after li after um, linking and it created our executable called toker node. Okay, this is located in the devil file, right? And it then tells us that it built the target called toker node. If we want to run that node, let's see. Um, first, we need to source. source the setup the bash file right then we use the command rs run and write the name of our package my first awesome package and then a token node okay if we run this command we'll say we'll get an an, an um, we'll get an um, a message showing us that it failed to contact the master because basically we did not open the master yet so first we do that by running our score right this I will create an instance of the, message, uh, the master and we'll see here that it displayed another info message called uh, saying that it connected to the master okay now what if I want to know what is being sent on the uh, what is what what is the communication that is being run right now on the RS um, RS uh, network? We will see the RS topic uh, command line tool and see list. Okay, we get that uh, that there's chatter, something called chatter topic. Okay, we want to get well, this is the topic that we published already. Let's call it. Um, to get more information about it okay we see that it's of the type string the publishers token node and subscribers nothing subscribes to it okay very well how about we want to echo it echo header what you see is that it started publishing start echoing what's being sent on the topic 
which is quite a lot, right? Let's uh, use the RQT tool to get more details about what's running, what's happening inside. So we see that under the namespace called token node, we have the node called token node, which basically sub, uh, it publishes to a topic called chatter, but since nothing is subscribing to it, it's not being um, displayed. Okay. Let's come over here. So these topics, topic monitor. So, our topic called chatter, uh, the type of the message on it is called um, uh, std strings, uh, std messages slash string. It's within a bandwidth of seven hundred, almost 700 kilobytes. And uh, its frequency, it's, it's publishing its uh, the messages on it with a rate of that's 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 huge that's five to seven that's almost you know like 50k 50k hertz um and you can see here that it's using a huge amount of bandwidth okay if this is on on a, ne on, on a network or something it's going to cost us a lot of bandwidth um this is because we did not specify a rate for our uh, or our node to run okay what we want to do is that we want to specify how much our node needs to execute okay we do that we're going here to QT uh, back to the QT creator and go to the, our token node we do that by creating an instance of an object called rate inside the namespace um, cross okay we call it a uh, loop rate Right, and then we specify it. Um, we specify the the rate in we are of which we want to create our messages. You know, let's go. Let's make it thirty hertz for now. Create an instance of rate object that is used to control node. Frequency. Then, after creating it, we come down here and we run the command. Or the, we use the method called sleep. Right? Very well. Let's compile our code again and see what happens. That can make done. Run our node again. Okay. Then we go to the RQT. Right? We see now that it's using a lot less bandwidth and the hertz, uh, the frequency of publishing is constant. It's 30 hertz, right? And it's using a constant, almost a constant um, bandwidth on uh, the, um, on the, the Russ uh, network. Very well, this is our talker node, right? How about now we add another node that subscribes to this topic and prints out the message the messages that are being um, sent on it okay you want to write a node let's go back over here go to the click on this src click uh, right click on the src and then add new let's get called basic node okay name it listener node dot cpp right listener dot cpp very well. Finish. So it be, uh, by default includes the ros dot uh, h. We are going to include std messages slash slash string, right? And then we delete these comments. So for it, it, it. Uh, by default, it called our ROS init function. Then we are going to create an instance of the node handle object. Node handle, call it node handle. Okay. 
then we will create an instance of the subscriber object the subscriber object is used to subscribe to a certain topic and it um, it it receives the messages and it allows us to process it later on okay let's go subscriber okay a uh, short for sub very well we will use the, uh, the the method called subscribe from the mess from the the node handle uh, methods okay if you want to know what this the syntax of this um, the syntax of this function we go over here and sub subscribe subscribe I'm pretty sure I'm gonna find it a very very lost okay there you there it is subscribe 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 yep there it is okay so basically what the subscribe takes the, the arguments that it takes is first it takes the cut the string uh, constant uh, std string reference to a topic uh, which is the topic name then it takes the queue size and then it takes a function pointer okay this method connects to the master to register interest in a given topic okay the node will automatically be connected with publishers on this topic on each message receipt fp which is a f function pointer is invoked and passed a shared pointer to the message received this message should not be changed in place as it is a shared as it is shared with any other subscriptions to this topic that is why it's being called with a const that uh, that's why it should be uh, implemented using a const okay the, this version of subscribe is a convenience function for using member functions that can be used like so okay if inside our main function we create the the, uh, the our subscriber over here subscriber sub using the function subscribe okay and we pass to it my topic and then uh, the queue size and then the third uh, option in, uh, let's ignore this for now we'll come back to it later but we know that we will pass a what a void function pointer which is the pointer to a function that will be called when our uh, function when our uh, when a message is received okay so we go back to our code we first uh, write the name of the topic that we want to subscribe to which is called chatter right then besides let's keep it one for now okay then a pointer to the function we will, we will, we will um, be uh, using let's call it sub subscriber callback okay again we go up here and define the function called subscriber callback subscriber callback this function takes as an input a constant okay constant std sorry std messages string const ptr reference received message okay what we'll do with the received message we know we know already that the received message contains one field or data of the type, data type string so we are going to print its contents you know by doing this uh, ros underscore info okay i received the following okay s and then received message data dot c under cool s e r After we're done, we run a command called rs spin. 
what basically our spin does is that it prevents our node from exiting okay because once uh, our, our um, code will initialize this function runs for a specific time and then it exits then we create an instance of another handle which doesn't make much time doesn't take much time and then it creates the instance of the subscriber which also doesn't uh, take much time so if we did not include the iris uh, spin function our code will exit immediately so we need to add the iris spin function to keep our code present on the iris network to keep it um, actually running Okay. Okay, we're done of writing our um, our uh, subscriber uh, node. Let's go to C, make this file, and then what we did for the token node, we'll do it again for the execute for the listener node. Might, but of course, by changing some stuff like the name and such. Okay, let's go right here. And here of also listener node.cpp. Okay, then we run the command get can make. Right? Okay, seems that I got an error. Okay, fatal error, right? Over here. Fatal error. Uh, std messages slash string no such file or directory. Seems that I made a mistake while doing the include. Uh, I forgot to add a dot h over here. Let me compile again and see. It compiles. And yeah, it compiles correctly. Built the target talker node and then it linked listener node. Built target listener node. And we're done. Okay. Very well. Let's add. Let's uh, try to, to try to run this and see what happens. Okay, we run our token node, and we open another terminal, and the run the listener node. Right. First, let me source. Okay, rs run my awesome package listener node, and we see that it's printing out what it received. I received the following: hello world, hello world, hello world, hello world. Some debugging tools, some very useful debugging tools, are the RQT, are the ones uh, provided by RQT, right? Let us refresh this. We'll see now that the token node over here publishes on topic chatter, which to which a node called listener node subscribes to, right? Very well. If we want to see what is being done on a chatter topic we see that it's at the bandwidth of uh, hertz 30 as we declared it in the, in the uh, file and this is the bandwidth that is that it is using okay very very um this is very nice right okay let's move on to something very important that i want to talk about which is the launch files okay suppose we want to run our two nodes the token node and publisher node simultaneously or both in the same time okay we will do that by co by um by writing a launch file and basically what a launch file is is that it starts the rs core so we can also stop our rs core it will be it will run by default okay what it does is that it launches the raw score and it launches also the nodes that we want to run and giving it also um, we, if we want to create parameters in the ROS launch, if we want to create namespaces, if we want to create a lot of stuff, we can use the, the ROS uh, launch uh, command line tool. Now what we're going to do is that we are going to create, let me, rcd my awesome package my awesome my ice my my awesome right my awesome first package right that seems not existing okay let's me my first awesome package yeah there you are okay we're going to create a folder called launch it appears over here then we create add new right add new uh, basic launch file okay 
Let's name it um talker listener at launch inside it we are going to run a node right so we, what we want to do is that we want to run our two nodes the the talker node and the listener node right we will call the first one so we will go, the syntax is like follows we first we add a tag called node Okay, then we write the name of the node that we want to create. We want to create this stalker node blah 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 because we want uh, just to, uh, I want to tell you that the name can be anything, but the package must be the exact name of the package that we that we are creating okay, first. Awesome. That we want to run this launch. To, to run this node from okay my, but the package is called my first awesome package right then we run the, we we write the type of it it's it, and the type has to be the exact name of the executable that we want to run or the node that did we want to run which is called talker node if you still remember right then what we did for the talker node we're going to repeat that for the listener node except actually for listener node need to change the stuff then since we want since listener node will be printing out its output we want to see that output okay we will do that by adding an argument here called output and putting it to um, setting its value to screen Okay, very well. Then we use the rs command line tool. Let me do it in the terminal, right? That's we don't want all that. Sourcing the setup the bash file. Let me rs launch. Let me run, launch the the launch file. My first awesome package. Docker listener launch file. If we do that. We see that it, it it ran both of our arguments. We see, you can see that by doing also running the RQT. We see under the name token node blah blah blah. We see our node token node blah blah publishing to the topic called chatter, and the listener node blah blah is listening to it under the namespace called listener node blah blah. Right very well let me also add another thing that i want to talk about here is which is called the the name space okay and s we want everything that is running right now to run under the name uh, under a certain namespace okay let's call it uh, ns uh, so, uh, sorry uh, we we add that by running uh, by writing ns which short it to namespace and then we write the namespace that we want to run our files under or the executables under uh, let's call it um uh, um i don't know maybe awesomeness yeah let's call it awesomeness okay we add that also over here very well then we quit over here launched the file again if we you know, run rqt again we'll see that okay it um it added our um it added our nodes under one namespace called awesomeness okay what this basically does is that it allows us to run multiple instances of the same nodes without confusing them, uh, conf confusing them um, together. You know, uh, how how can we do that? Let's see. Maybe you can. Let's create another launch file, right? Let's create another um, launch file. Actually, come over here. Just copy and paste this over here, but without none awesome yes another namespace different from the other one 
So we're running exactly the same nodes, the token node and the lesson node and token node and lesson node, but under different namespaces. See that how it's going to work? Launch 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 file again. If we then uh, refresh the RKT graph, you see that it created another namespace called non awesomeness and uh, another name and uh, one one name says called non awesomeness and the other named awesomeness right and the two nodes are like, the exact same but they are running under different namespaces so they publish different data or the communication that yeah, there's no confusion between them you know it's like i have uh, two children one called jack and the other called um, jack but this one's father is called jack bauer and the other is called jack you know uh, jack I don't know, Jack, whatever, Jack Johnson, or whatever, you know, you get the idea, right? This one is called Jack Bauer, and the other is called Jack um, Johnson. So I'm not confused between the two, but if this one is called Jack and this one is called Jack, I'm going to be confused between the two, right? Very well. If for some reason I forgot to add the namespace, If I, if I forgot to add the namespace uh, for for one of them, okay, what what what's what's going to happen? Let's see. Refresh the graph. We'll see that the node called token node, the one that we removed its uh, namespace, is not able to communicate with this node, with the listener node. Why? If you want to know why, let's open a terminal and go type iOS topic list. We'll see the following, that we have a topic called chatter, right? And we have a topic called non-awesomeness chatter and a topic called awesomeness chatter. So the namespace, basically, what it does is that it adds the name of this, uh, the namespace before anything that is being published or subscribed on the uh, from the messages that is being run under that namespace, okay? That's why that the, the node called token node blah 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 over here is publishing its topic. It's the topic that is mentioned inside the chatter, uh, inside the C++ file is called chatter, right? However, the node that's called uh, token node here is uh, which is run inside the awesomeness, you know, which is run inside the awesomeness namespace over here. Okay, is publishing its uh, data on the awesomeness chatter uh, uh, topic, not on chatter topic. Okay, this is a this is a very important and also uh, useful uh, information uh, to know. Okay, if we want to know, I uh, just want to show you something. Our topic. Okay, echo. We want to echo the chatter topic. We see that the messages are being sent on the chatter topic. However, if we, if we echo the non awesomeness, non awesomeness chatter, we see that there's nothing being published on it. Okay, but it's there because the subscriber node declared or um, declared that it wants to subscribe to a topic called non awesomeness chatter, even though that there's nothing being published on it. So let's add back. Our namespace over here and see what happens here close this right let's launch again and open our QT and we'll see that it's back again normally our topic list we see that the chatter topic is no longer there and our topic echoing that the non awesomeness topic shows that, that there's actually data being sent on it all right very well this is it for today um we are going to add more and more tutorials next um, time hope you managed to get some idea hope you this um this tutorial was useful to you thank you